what are the antecedents? Of, the antecedents are based on communication, so word of mouth communication, whether it's communication done by other customers, but also on companies' advertising, past experiences, also the buyer's needs. Yeah, so again, we can see in this framework that uh, customers expect a given level of product or service performance or relationship performance, and they perceive really the performance of the product, service, or relationship. Uh, and the difference between both brings either a positive disconfirmation, which is, which is called satisfaction, or brings a negative disconfirmation, which is called dissatisfaction. And you can see that the expectations customers have depend on these four variables. And so first of all, communication. So the more positive the advertising is, the more the company gives promises to the customers, the higher the expectations. Uh, the better the word of mouth or the reviews uh, which are done by customers are, the higher will be the expectations. Huh? Let's take the example of uh, TripAdvisor. When customers see, see a lot of positive reviews, uh, a lot of nice pictures of a hotel room, then the expectations will be high in accordance to the positive reviews or large number of profit and promises which are given by the brand. Another factor is clearly the experience. And so if you have only positive experiences in a given hotel room, and so we have a high expectation about the standards and the services which are given in the room or in the hotel, and so the expectations will be high. And therefore, our expectations are based on what we have lived before in terms of buying experience, our past buying experience. And last but not least, there are our needs and the buyer's needs. And so uh, the higher the needs, uh, the higher the expectations. Uh, so if we book a room for a honeymoon or for, for a holiday trip, uh, we clearly have higher expectations than we, if we book it only for one hotel night. Uh, according to buying situations, according to buyer's needs, uh, customers have given expectations. Uh, and past experience and needs are strongly related also to, uh, to, to the buyer's income. Uh, so uh, if the income is higher, the expectations are generally also higher. Uh, but it's also related to age. Uh, so younger customers have experiences uh, and sometimes also and mostly all, uh, also lower needs, lower expectations due to less exigence, exigencies uh, in terms of their needs. And that is why these factors are important uh, to consider when valuing expectations, product and service expectations. Uh, clearly, firms have to pay attention how they influence the expectations through communication companies and customer communication, but also they have to take into account the former experiences and buyers' needs that the customers have. Uh, some, um, uh, yeah, some factors which are more important than others. We look at how Frederick Herzberg's two-factor theory can be applied to workplace motivation and sales as well as marketing, including service quality. His thoughts on the elements that motivate employees by their presence and those that demotivate by their absence can also be applied to marketing and can help marketing managers to improve marketing activities, including service quality. Herzberg's theory has broad applicability to any process or service activity that involves people, so naturally it can be applied to marketing. However, by reflecting on the motivating factors and the hygienic factors, he identifies in his theory, we can see if companies can motivate a customer to buy a product from the business instead of from a competitor and how qualifiers can be used to differentiate in a competitive market. There are two types of factors, the hygienic factors and the motivators. The hygienic factors are actually the factors which are necessary because if they are not fulfilled, the customer will be dissatisfied. But if you outperform, if you delight the customers on these hygienic factors, then you don't necessarily achieve more satisfaction. And so these are the hygienic factors. For example, if in human resources management, we know that money, the salary, is a hygienic factor. If you don't offer enough money, if your salary is not good, then the employees will be dissatisfied. But if you increase the salaries, it's not that factor that really motivates employees to perform better. Applied to customer relationship or service marketing, it is the competence, reliability, and tension. Because actually we expect, this is the minimum, quite obvious, that we want reliable service providers. It is obvious that we want competent providers and clean and 
clear equipment, tangibles in the service domain. If you improve dramatically these factors, you won't achieve a very proportionally similar high level of satisfaction. So these are the hygienic factors. Huh? On the other side, you have the motivators or the enhancing factors. If they are improved beyond adequacy, you will have a very high impact on satisfaction. On the other hand, if you don't use them, you won't decrease this satisfaction. These are actually employee empowerment, right? delegation, job delegation. We know that if you don't do job delegation, if a lot of employees are not really concerned about it, right? above all in the production sector. In the management sector, it's a little bit, little bit different. If you do empower, then some employees are proportionally very highly satisfied with their job. So this is in the HRM. And in marketing or service marketing, it is actually all consulting relationship quality, individualization. Because these are effects of attributes we don't expect. But if we experience them, then we are proportionally more satisfied. And this has been shown by research and service marketing, service management and literature, that actually some of the self quality dimensions have more impact on satisfaction than others, which does not mean that you have to neglect the other. If you want to allocate resources, it's better to invest more in personalization and relationship marketing than to invest in tension, which does not mean that you don't have to invest money, but you have to invest a minimum level, you have an adequate level of satisfaction. But if you really want to have the wow effect, you have to invest in individualized relationships with the customers because these dimensions are not really expected by the customer. To summarize Herzberg's B-factor theory, when you translate the theory to marketing, you can see that hygiene factors are essentially qualif qualifiers, the features that buyers expect to be present in a product or a service, although the presence won't necessarily help to push decision makers into responding to your sales message. And the presence will not necessarily lead to higher satisfaction, but the absence will lead to higher dissatisfaction. On the other hand, motivators are the second component of Herzberg's two-factor theory. They are the extras that help motivate potential buyers to choose a product or a service above a competitor. They really differentiate one service or one product from another one. Usually they are associated with benefits which really differentiate and position a brand. So creating benefits around motivators will really help to motivate buyers towards a brand or a service and power up elite generation marketing. Motivating factors include extra guarantees, relationship marketing, the number of customer service touch points, endorsement, testimonials, and accreditations. Yeah, according to the prospect theory, which is a theory developed by Kahneman and Tversky, which are economic Nobel prizes from Daniel Kahneman, thinking fast and slow. Prospect theory is a psychology theory that describes how people make decisions when presented with alternatives that involve risk, probability, and uncertainty. Uncertainty refers to the inability to foretell consequences on it. It holds that people make decisions based on perceived losses or gains. An important element of prospect theory is the idea that individuals are particular averse to losing what they already have and less concerned to gain. Customers therefore value more the avoiding of losses than the probability to gain as they want to avoid risks and have risk averse behaviors. The impact of losses, thus the negative outcomes of behavior or decision making, are there thus greater than the impact of gains, that is the positive outcomes of decision making. Prospect theory thus can explain why people ex exhibit both risk seeking and risk averse behavior. The most famous implication of prospect theory is loss averse, which means that we do not like losses but losses inflict psychological harm to a greater degree than gains gratify. Which means that people are more willing to run risk to avoid losses than to take the probability to make equivalent gains. Loss aversion is the tendency to prefer avoiding losses to acquiring equivalent gains. 
The principle is prominent in the domain of economics. Loss aversion implies that one who loses $100 will lose more satisfaction than the same person will gain satisfaction from a $100 gain. When making decisions, people will be influenced by the different semantic descriptions of the same issue and have different risk preferences, which is called the framing effect, indicating that people make decisions based on the potential value of losses and gains rather than the final outcome. So it's important to do framing and to frame rather on the avoiding of losses than on the gain of equivalent gains. Prospect theory has become one of the most widely cited theories and has been applied in a variety of areas, including economics, finance, and marketing management. The task of marketers is to understand how and why people behavior deviates from rational decision models. Very frequent applications of the prospect theory in marketing have been decisions involving money, such as prices, discounts, coupon promotions, advertising, monetary incentives, including sales force compensation and product bundling. Therefore, in pr uh, prospect theory in marketing, people thus try to avoid losses eh, and they are ready to accept smaller gains with higher winning probabilities than to accept higher gains with smaller winning probabilities. Applied to the research about loyalty programs or sales promotions, the prospect theory explains why customers prefer sure small rewards over large important uncertainty rewards. In other words, they prefer a bundle of smaller certain rewards than uncertain delayed bigger rewards. Applied to the service quality management, the impact of losses is greater than the impact of gains, that is the positive outcomes. And as losses have more impact than the gains, hygiene factors or dissatisfiers have thus priority over the enhancing motivators or satisfiers. In other words, it's more important to avoid dissatisfaction by working on improving competence reliability and tangibles, then promising motivators, that is relationship quality, personalization and other motivators or satisfiers. So it's absolutely important to avoid losses on dissatisfiers and subsequently it is important to work also on the satisfiers because these are the differentiators that differentiate one brand from the other one in order to create brand differentiation.